welcome back to Feature Machine. My name's Rachel. I'm a registered dietitian who is always in the mood for food. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to make a really easy pizza dough that is absolutely delicious. So let's get started. What about pizza? We actually haven't made pizza a while in our house because we were in Italy. So instead of making the pizza, we were eating the pizza and it was a dream come true. We actually had 11 pizzas while we were over there. Let me reinforce that the honeymoon was 11 days. So that's one pizza per day. Um, but no shame here at all. It was delicious and we enjoyed every single moment. We technically had 10 pizzas. One of the pizzas was a pizza flavored can of Pringles that were really, really good. Anyway, so we are ready to get back into the pizza making game again now that we've been home and we miss Italy so much. We use our Uni oven to cook these pizzas. You can use a regular oven too. Shout out to Uni, we do love you. Um, if you wanna treat yourself to something, definitely recommend buying one of those. But you can make this pizza, like I said, in a regular oven. And I'll definitely mention some tips and tricks throughout this video and below to where the recipe will be. So, what do you need? First thing is flour, of course. Now we use double oat flour in this recipe. It allows for a lower protein content. It's a finer ground flour. So with the lower gluten, lower protein content, you're going to get a much crispier, airier dough. We prefer that in our pizza. If you like a doughier pizza, this recipe might not be for you, but try it anyway because you will not regret it. So this recipe calls for 434 grams of double oat flour. It really makes a difference, guys. Try it out. You will need 265 grams of water. You're gonna need 13 grams of salt, 10 grams of active dry yeast, and four grams of olive oil. With all of these ingredients, you can make a 10 minute pizza dough. However, it does take about 18 to 24 hours to rise. So make sure you make this in advance. The more rise time, the better the dough is gonna be, I promise. Um, I'm sure you could try using a quick rise yeast, I wouldn't recommend it though. If you're gonna make this with us, definitely use the active dry yeast. So you're gonna start by activating the yeast. And the best way to do that is make sure your water is a little bit warm, put your yeast in, set it to the side for at least five minutes, covered lightly with a towel or saran wrap. After that, take your flour and then you're gonna add salt in, whisk it together. You have your dry ingredients prepared. Once those are prepared, once the yeast has had time to activate, it gets all fluffy and foamy and does its thing, um, you can take your hand mixer out and get mixing. So pour your flour in, then add your yeast mixture, mix that together, and then add your olive oil. So the olive oil that we're using is from Italy. I feel very fortunate in saying that. You can use store-bought olive oil, that's absolutely fine. My tips though, make sure it's extra virgin olive oil and look for one in a darker colored bottle that helps preserve the oil much better compared to a lighter color bottle. So add that all in and mix that in your KitchenAid mixer or any type of electric mixer I recommend. You could need this by hand as well, but it will take a little bit longer. Mix that for at least six minutes until you get a nice sticky dough. So as you can see, as I poke this here, it bounces back a little bit, but not much. It's really just kind of sticky and ready for its rise time. So now I'm going to cut this dough into three equal parts, and this is gonna make three separate pizzas for tomorrow night. What I'll do is put them each in a oiled container and let that sit covered in the fridge for at least 18 to 24 hours. And we're ready to go. I think that's why I just like the pizzas. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow. Welcome to pizza night. We are back. The dough has risen. We've let it set out of the fridge for a little bit and we're gonna let it hang out while I prep the ingredients for our pizza. So something crucial to an amazing flavor in pizza is of course the cheese. So the two cheeses that we're using, we got blocks at the local deli. I'm pretty sure they're cut at like 16. You just want like a thick enough block to make sure that you can grate it of um, provolone cheese and of mozzarella cheese. These really make the difference and we create a blend to put on top of the pizzas. So I'm going to be 
first grating the cheese and mixing this all together. So in addition to this cheese blend, we also are pretty picky about our tomato sauce. As you saw in the pasta recipe for the last video, we use Cento tomatoes. I may or may not have mentioned that, but we use Cento tomatoes. Um, so we like to puree those um, and just take them straight out of the can, or we'll actually go and get the Cento brand tomato sauce. Um, we just find that it has such a really, it has a really good flavor. So that's what we'll be using on the pizzas tonight our cheese blend and then of course we're going to create some different flavors of pizza so we are going to make a white pizza with a roasted garlic olive oil so we're going to add those garlic cloves in the little oven safe ramekin and then on top of that some of our olive oil from italy and then we also added some spicy olive oil that we got from italy it is infused with all these peppers and it's absolutely delicious and then additional herbs like thyme and rosemary I'm gonna roast that in the oven for about 40 minutes and wait for the garlic to get all crispy and bubbly and ooh, look at the bubbles, they look so good. Now that our garlic is roasted and our oven has heated up to the appropriate temperature, it's time to make the pizza. So I am recording right now because honestly, Matthew is a little bit better at mixing. So I am being the videographer and showing you what he does. Um, so we have a really great pizza mat that we like to use so we can get as messy as we want with the flour. You don't want to stretch it too thin, y'all, because if you do, you won't be able to really put any toppings and you will break your pizza in half when you try to cook it in the uni. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like it. Please subscribe to my channel. I can't wait to share more recipes with y'all. Peace out.